All right. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, first of all, I wanna thank all of you for joining us this evening um, virtually um, at dinner time uh, to talk about uh, back of the yards in New City. Um, you know, tonight what we want to do is kind of have a visioning workshop around a few opportunity sites that have been identified um, in the neighborhood. Um, this is all part of our, you know, the city's Invest Southwest initiative. Um, and so, um, you know, the goal for this evening, I think, is to, to give you a welcome. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Department of Planning and Development Commissioner Maurice Cox um, to give some kind of welcoming comments. Um, but then we'll go into a little introduction uh, to Invest Southwest since I know um, you know, for a lot of you, this may be new um, and you may not have a lot of information on Invest Southwest. So we want to give you a little background. Um, we'll then talk through the workshop goals, um, you know, talk a little bit about past planning efforts um, that have been done in back of the yards. Um, I'll turn it over to our design team um, to talk a little bit about um, some preliminary market analysis findings um, that they've had. And then we'll go into a discussion around a few opportunity sites um, in the neighborhood that we want to advance. And so, um, that's sort of the goals for this evening. Um, at this point, I do want to um, give Commissioner Cox an opportunity um, to provide some kind of opening comments. Commissioner? Are you there, Commissioner? Uh, so can you hear me? There we go, yes. Excellent. Um, so uh, good evening, everyone. and. Uh, Thanks so much for, for joining uh, this uh, visioning workshop. And um, you're gonna hear a lot about uh, Invest Southwest. Uh, you may have heard um, a lot about it from your neighbors or, or um, friends that you have in other neighborhoods where um, the city has launched uh, this uh, really unprecedented effort uh, to bring uh, equitable investments, equitable development to the south and west side. Uh, so I'm really, really um, excited uh, to get your input um, because this is a little different for city in terms of how it is um, shining a light on the amazing assets that exist in um, communities on the uh, south side. Um, with a very, very specific set of goals that you um, will hear us talk about, the idea of neighborhood growth, but that uh, growth that is uh, inclusive of the people who live there, uh, providing the kinds of amenities and options uh, that really just enhance the quality of life. Um, we, are, uh, we are doing this through um, the so-called RFPs, these um, requests for proposals, which solicits uh, development for key opportunity sites um, that uh, your community uh, has a number of, uh, of them. Uh, but unlike um, other uh, solicitations for development, we actually want to show the developers what the community uh, desires. Um, and so we are inviting your input to help shape um, what goes in the RFP so that those who respond um, have a much better chance of, of getting close to what a community's vision is of themselves. Uh, and so um, this is engaging you at the ground level before we actually go out and ask for solicitations. But I would also uh, say it's really important um, to set the stage that we're not looking for developers uh, to come in uh, and do their thing. We're actually looking for a process that creates community wealth um, that builds uh, new partnerships that, that embody knowledge that so many groups on the ground have should come out and be partners uh, in the development. And so it's really, really important, uh, these workshops, because uh, it gives, uh, it grounds the work uh, that we're asked to do um, with local knowledge. And my hope is that um, out of this, you will see 
um, aspirations that you have for the community reflected in the outcome. And to do that, we're very, very fortunate to have a very talented uh, team on the ground of, of planners. Uh, you, 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 if you haven't met them all, uh, you can see them tonight from Carmen and uh, Nolan and John uh, and Sonia and, uh, and Gerardo, who are our planning team, but to expand our, our planning um, width and our capacity, we've invited the um, Chicago Central Area Committees and their network of architects uh, to help us visualize um, the form of this work. Uh, and Lamar Johnson Collaborative is here tonight uh, and uh, are gonna share with you some initial thoughts and receive your input. So I just wanna welcome everyone. Uh, thanks so much for engaging in this process. It's very, very exciting for us. Uh, and we value your time tonight and your input. So I look forward to the work that you'll do. Thanks, uh, Nolan. Great, thank you, Commissioner. And so, yeah, so, so with that, I do wanna give, as the Commissioner mentioned, we're joined tonight by a design team, uh, a team of you know, planners, designers, architects, real estate professionals. Um, and I wanna give um, Kelly O'Brien, the Executive Director of the Chicago Central Area Committee, an opportunity um, to introduce them and introduce herself um, as they'll be assisting us tonight in, um, you know, having a conversation around these opportunity sites and then helping us to, you know, come up with some design ideas um, and programming ideas for those sites. So Kelly. Um, Thank you, Nolan. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly O'Brien. And as it has already been mentioned, I am the executive director of the Chicago Central Area Committee. And this is an organization um, that was created in the 1950s. For the last several years, we have been um, working in the neighborhoods, building relationships, and really driven by the belief that the city is only as good as its neighborhoods. And as the commissioner mentioned, our membership consists of architectural firms, design firms, real estate lawyers, higher ed, people that are really passionate about planning and development. And we were extremely honored when the commissioner uh, gave us the opportunity to work with the uh, terrific professionals uh, on the staff of DPD and working in the first round of drafting RFPs for Invest Southwest that went public in August. And everybody was so thrilled with the collaboration that there was an agreement to work on the second round, which is why we're here tonight. So I just wanna say that I couldn't be prouder of the work that we're doing, um, the mission that we're all joining together tonight um, to start on so that we have a product that everybody can be really proud of. And I can assure you that the um, professionals and the commissioner at the Chicago Department of Planning and Development could not possibly be working longer hours or have more of a commitment to making this successful. And on behalf of CCAC, we're doing everything we can um, to, to provide real value. And we hope at the end of this process that there are lifelong friendships that are created. So with that, I just wanna mention that we have um, one of our member firms, the Lamar Johnson Collaborative as the team leader. And then we have firms such as Compass, Landmark Development, and Sam Swartz that are all participating um, in the work and uh, here with us tonight. So with that, Nolan, back to you. Great, thank you, Kelly. Um, and again, I just wanna pause here and just recognize uh, the different stakeholders um, and community representatives that we have uh, with us this evening. You know, in addition to the planning team from the city of Chicago, um, the design team from um, CCAC, we also have a number of different organizations from back of the yards that are represented here tonight and participating. Um, we have representation from um, both uh, Alderman Lopez's office as well as Alderwoman Taylor's office. Um, we have representatives from local schools, local residents, local business owners. Um, so we have a great group here. Um, tonight to participate. Um, and I do want to do a little housekeeping before we go on to the rest of the presentation. And again, reiterate that, you know, we will, we are recording this tonight. So, so we don't lose or miss any of any of your comments um, or questions. Um, you know, during the presentation, we're going to keep everyone muted. But once we get to the open discussion um, at uh, agenda item six with the opportunity sites, 
Um, we will kind of open the floor um, for folks to raise your hand, um, ask a question, speak, um, provide feedback or thoughts on these sites. Um, we'll also be monitoring the chat and the Q&A functions in Zoom tonight. So if you, you know, if you're shy, you don't want to um, you don't want to talk, but you still want to get um, your thoughts conveyed, um, feel free to type um, any ideas or comments or questions into the chat function or into the Q&A function, and we'll make sure to record those um, as well. And I think we're going to try and do a little bit of a round robin when we get to that point where um, we're unmuting folks um, to speak and, and provide their thoughts. Um, and we're also, um, we're also going to try to read some of the comments and questions that come through the chat function. So that's how we're going to try and, and run this workshop tonight. Um, but we do have a limited time, so I do want to get into a little bit of background. I know, you know, for a lot of you, you may be new to Invest Southwest if you haven't participated in the kickoff um, that we had last fall or last winter, um, or any of the neighborhood roundtables. This may be new to you. Um, as the commissioner mentioned, you know, Invest Southwest is really um, a citywide initiative looking to do improvement, um, community improvements, um, and coordinating, you know, multiple resources and investments on the city's south and west sides. And so we're looking to support not just infrastructure development, um, not just you know, real estate development, but also looking at improving programming, um, adjusting policies um, to make sure that we're creating a lasting impact in these neighborhoods. Um, we're focusing initially on 10 communities on Chicago's south and west sides. Back of the Yards and New City is one of those 10, those initial 10 communities. Um, but the idea is, is over you know, the next several years, we'll be rolling this out to other communities. Um, and we're looking to align more than $750 million in, in city resources and private and philanthropic resources um, over the next three years to really spur development um, and catalyze investment in these neighborhoods. Um, and the goals of Invest Southwest are really fourfold. One is to make sure that we're amplifying local assets. You know, these communities back of the yards has a tremendous number of assets and amenities that already exist there. You know, strong community organizations, um, you know, residents and business owners who care about the neighborhood. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're leveraging these assets, um, both physical and people and social assets, um, to make sure that we're, you know, driving um, investment and development and prosperity in this community. We want to make sure that we're focusing public investments to support local priorities. And that's one of the reasons we're here tonight, is to make sure that when we're, you know, um, implementing our programs or um, you know, dedicating funds to a project that it's supporting local goals, that it's informed by, you know, your needs, your thoughts, your vision for the community, for your community. Um, we want to make sure that we're driving private investment to build local wealth. And so, you know, we're really committed to um, putting city resources into these neighborhoods and these corridors um, in the hopes that it will encourage and spur private investors to put their resources there as well. Um, and then finally, you know, Public safety is always important. We want to make sure that as we're looking at design, looking at investment um, in these areas, that we're integrating new strategies for public safety into everything that we do. Um, and so this is the map. This is sort of the area of focus in New City and Back of the Yards. We're really focused initially on 47th Street and Ashland Avenue. That's 47th Street between Hoyne and Loomis, um, and then Ashland from about 43rd to 49th. Um, and the idea is how do we catalyze investment, investment in these areas? How do we build from areas of strength? Um, but the hope is that it will have that sort of ripple effect um, or spillover effect into the, you know, the adjacent blocks and neighborhoods. Um, and for tonight, our, you know, the goals of tonight's workshop is we've identified you know, through community input, through the neighborhood roundtables, and we've identified um, three opportunity sites um, along the corridor uh, that we want to um, get your feedback on and kind of build out a vision for these three sites um, and then eventually turn that into, um, as the commissioner mentioned, a request for proposals to try and get um, a development to happen um, at one of these sites. And so the goals for tonight is really to determine specific development possibilities um, for, these, for these locations, um, making sure that they, you know, they fit the vision and goals of the neighborhood um, and, and of your thoughts and, and your needs. Um, we want to make sure that we're attracting new amenities and business um, and, and partnering, you know, where feasible with public, in, or I'm sorry, with private owners on larger projects, developing publicly owned land, um, and identifying opportunities for just economic development um, along these corridors. Um, and it's also important just to mention, and I won't spend too much time on this, but, you know, we're not starting from scratch here. There's been a number of years of um, planning um, and community engagement in back of the yards. 
um, from LISC Chicago's Quality of Life Plan in 2014 um, to the UIC Great, Initi Great Cities Initiative study in 2019. Um, we're not starting from scratch. We have a lot of information already that's been informed by the community um, and informed by analysis um, to help guide us. But we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're continuously touching um, base with the community. We're hearing your thoughts. We're making sure that we're, we're still on the right track. And that's one of the things that we're hoping to do tonight. Um, and so those past plans and studies, and you will see this in some of the, um, the options that have been developed by the Lamar Johnson Collaborative for discussion tonight. Um, you know, these past plans and studies have identified some, um, some needs that, that the community has identified in the past in terms of economic development, in terms of beautification and housing needs, um, in terms of expanded um, programming and services for youth, um, for safety and recreation and education. Um, and then also, you know, civically or, or, or you know, social services and civic oriented um, programming, whether that's a library or a community space. I'm looking at health and well-being, and, and, and again, you know, finally looking at opportunities to expand arts and culture um, that's really um, you know, community sensitive and, and reflective of the community. And so these are some of the things um, that, that have bubbled up in past plans and studies that we've incorporated into these, um, these design concepts tonight that we're going to have you take a look at. Um, but it's really important to underscore that we're here to, to listen to you um, and to hear what your thoughts are. And so you'll see these, these are just starting points for conversation, um, but none of this is set in stone. None of this is baked. Um, the reason why we're here tonight is to make sure that um, that you know what we're building out on these opportunity sites um, really reflects um, what you need and what your vision is for the community. Um, and so, with that, I do want to turn it over to Eric Dewald from Landmark, um, who has put together kind of some preliminary um, market figures that will help to hopefully inform the conversation tonight. Eric, are you there? Yes. Thanks, Noel. Uh, so here's just a general overview uh, based on ESRI data. It, within the New City Back of the Arts area, there's just over 13,000 households, uh, and that's about 45,000 people, uh, which equates to uh, a 3.44 average household size, which is, is on the larger end of household sizes. Uh, in terms of housing units, uh, there's over 50% rental households within the market. Uh, just a little under 20% of the housing units are vacant and uh, about 29% owner occupied housing units. Uh, the median household income is about 35,000. Uh, and then within ethnic groups, the, the largest group is of Hispanic origin under the categories of the census years is uh, followed by black, white, uh, two or more races, Asian and Native American. The market conditions within the, in this area, the strengths are, uh, there's uh, essentially two strong corridors. Uh, as a result, they are well served at this point by grocery and pharmacy, as well as bank uh, offerings. Some of the existing offerings include Aldi's, Walgreens, and MB Bank. The, there is an established retail area west of Ashland, and the significant car traffic on both 47th and Ashland helped to uh, drive that existing commercial. The challenges include uh, existing vacancy of uh, some larger format retail, uh, which was the, the former Walmart and then Marshalls. Uh, the median age of the housing stock is, uh, is on the older side. This, uh, much of the neighborhood was built uh, over 100 years ago. And the, uh, the, due to those vacancy factors uh, and some of the other market factors, commercial and residential development uh, need public subsidy to be realized that the, the market alone may not drive them. We also looked at uh, retail leakage, which is basically looking at the amount of uh, household spending or demand within a market area versus the amount of supply or uh, stores that provide that uh, those offerings. Uh, in, in this market, as we noted previously, 
the there is not a lot of leakage in terms of uh, things like grocery or uh, pharmacies. Uh, there were a few sectors where there where there is more demand than uh, than supply, including uh, automobile dealers, uh, uh, hobby and bookstores, uh, office supplies, and, and so forth. Uh, in some cases, that doesn't necessarily indicate a, a shortage of supply. It just means that there is, uh, you know, for example, automobile dealers don't tend to locate in every market area. I think that was it, Eric. Was there anything else you wanted to add? No, that's the that's the basic overview. Great, thank you. Um, and so I do want to turn it over at this point to Carmen Martinez from our team, as well as um, members of the Lamar Johnson Collaborative um, to walk us through um, the opportunity sites. And again, you know, what they've done is they've taken past plans and studies and kind of the things that, that we've heard in those past plans and studies um, and tried to develop some concepts, um, just some ideas, um, kind of conversation starters um, for three sites. Um, along 47th Street. Um, and so we're gonna present those to you and then we're gonna open the floor to comments and questions. And again, you know, and I, I hope, you know, Carmen and, and Lamar Johnson Collaborative kind of um, reiterate this, but again, I think it's just, you know, we wanna open the floor to just comments and questions and get, get thoughts from you in terms of, you know, what things make sense, what doesn't make sense, um, you know, what are, you know, are these things that you could see happen along the corridor? Are there things that are missing, elements that are missing that we need to take into account? Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Carmen at this point uh, to talk through um, kind of the site, the, the opportunity sites and how we've um, arrived at those. Carmen? Okay, great. Um, hi everyone, Carmen Martinez with DPD, um, also known as Carmen Martinez. Um, for, for those um, Spanish speakers, I did see a chat earlier from someone. Um, if you have any questions, you want to type them in Spanish, please feel free. Si alguien tiene preguntas, por favor, eh, puede escribir las preguntas uh, bajo en la pantalla. Um, as discussed, uh, Invest Southwest uh, really has focused on trying to invest in uh, communities. New City um, is in our Southwest region. And we're going to get a little bit overview, just big picture on how this corridor was selected really wanted to identify potential corridors that uh, met the goals of Invest Southwest. So we were trying to, along with some of the uh, residents, business owners that were participating in Roundtable, as well as areas identified in the kickoff meeting, um, trying to identify highly visible sites along the key corridor, something that was, uh, had great proximity, had advantages of either being city-owned or having privately-owned land that we've had communication with, as well as um, just trying to listen to the comments that some of the residents have had as well as business owners while we've had discussions throughout the year. So um, our discussion today is going to be looking at key sites along 47th Street. We have three locations um, highlighted on the map. First site is uh, 47th and Justine. Second site is the Rainbow Building on the corner of Ashland Avenue and 47th Street, as well as a Bishop Plaza. We'll go through each site individually, uh, and as each site is presented, we will have some potential solutions, and then we'll move on to the next site. Okay. If you wanna move on with next slide, and I'm going to be passing this on over to LJC. They can give you a little bit more information on some of the corridor studies that were done. Thanks, Carmen. Uh, my name is Cale Dornbos. I'm a, a landscape architect with uh, Lamar Johnson Collaborative, and I'm going to walk through um, a little, give you a, a brief overview of, of the neighborhood, some of the, uh, the assets and anchors and site um, uh, things in the neighborhood that we began to take a look at as we, as we before we hone on, on individual sites. And I'm going to turn it over to Andesh, one of my partners, to, to really talk about some of the site inventory and, and research that she's done as we begin to study the corridor. So, uh, and you guys are all probably very familiar with both of this, but I think it helped us as we began to really kind of uh, focus on 47th and Ashland and all the different opportunities and sites along the corridor. But there are a lot of different um, great assets in the community that we think these three sites and, and really the, the RFP process begin to build on and continue to, to elevate uh, the corridor. So uh, some of the things that we, we, we take a look at are the, uh, the plant. Uh, there's a Miles Square Health Center. Um, there's a former Aronson Furniture site along Ashland just west of 
of, of the uh, north on the west side of Ashland. Um, the Oppenheimer Goldblatt brothers were doing a lot of work done on that as well. Many of you are well known or well well aware of on the southwest corner of 47th and Ashland. Uh, the Cesar Chavez uh, Multicultural Academic Center, John Hamline. Uh, you guys have a lot of, there's a lot of really um, good bones to the neighborhood and great infrastructure and things happening. So I think uh, as we look at these sites, um, keeping the lens of that's continuing to do, to build on the on, on all of the, uh, the great work and great infrastructure that the neighborhood has. And, and as look at what we can do to take these sites and, and, and really um, uh, work well with what's going on in the neighborhood and, and be, a, be a, an asset that continues to build on, on, on all the wonderful things going on along the corridors. So next slide. So now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Anashka and she's going to take you through some of the site analysis we've done. So what we did, the first thing we did when we, uh, when we began the process was we went out and visited the site and uh, spent some time along the corridor uh, taking a look at different, um, different what's happening in the corridor today, what, what are all the wonderful things that are happening out there. But then came back and also looked at a lot of different things like transportation, are there traffic conflicts, um, things of that nature. So Aneshka is going to run you through the next few slides and talk about some of that discovery that we made as we worked on the project, the start of the project. Hello, everybody. I, I think these slides we can go through fairly quickly because for us, for us, it was all new information, but I know everyone on this call who lives in this neighborhood, this is all very well known to you. But just a quick summary, when we were on the site and also backed up by the data that we found, uh, both 47th Street and uh, Ashland Avenue are extremely busy roads with uh, a lot of truck traffic as well. Um, we have two great bus routes, the 47th and uh, bus route number nine, uh, going down the corridor. Uh, another thing that we found is that the, the, the sites that we're looking at are actually a uh, mile and a half away from both a CTA stop and a metro stop. So those were things that we were considering when we were looking at these locations. Uh, Nolan, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, another part of our analysis was looking at some of the traffic safety in this area. So as you can see, there have been many accidents, um, both along Ashland Avenue and on the, with the intersection of 47th Street. And some of these findings then led to um, our proposals and recommendations of what to do with the public realm. And uh, Nolan, if you can go to the next slide. I think what you'll really see here is, you know, there are three specific sites that we're studying with DPD. But really, we want to take a look at the whole corridor because whatever we, you know, as, as we hone on the individual sites, we want to make sure that what we're looking at uh, really responds to the, to the entire corridor and becomes a, a benefit and, and begins to, to spur other um, development down the road. And, and as we do all of these things, that they all really stitch together in a meaningful way. So that's why we look at things like traffic, um, you know, existing uh, transportation, making sure that what we're doing is not just benefiting that individual site or that individual location, but really is beginning to build a network and a fabric of the community um, stretching along Ashland and 47 both directions. So uh, while the bus stop that's, that's east of, of our sites may not seem like it makes sense immediately, but, but it really begins to, to layer in that larger fabric, that larger story of, of, of the corridor. Thank you. So this slide, we started to identify some of the traffic safety issues that we found walking around and talking to the neighbor, neighborhood. Um, just talking to some of the businesses both along Ashland and 47th Street. So some of the things that we found were, was that um, the sidewalks both on Ashland and 47th, many of them were uneven. Um, in many parts, they were too narrow and, and uh, unsafe and unaccessible. Uh, the business owners also complained or said that perhaps beautifying these uh, sidewalks or adding, you know, uh, trash cans and other and trees might bring more people to come and, um, and frequent their stores. Um, the, the red spot, spot in the center that you see is um, we really identified a pinch point on 47th and Ashland, which is the bus stop in that corner right there. Um, the street there gets really narrow and that bus stop is way too close to the intersection. So in our next slide, we'll talk about how we could improve that. And the last thing I wanted to point out um, is there have been discussions with CDOT about uh, McDowell Street and um, the way that it hits both 47th and Ashland, that kind of awkward corner there. 
There have been, as you saw in the previous slides, many accidents on those corners. And so we were thinking about how can we reimagine that intersection and what, can we, what else can we do there? So now if you go to the next slide. Um, and this is our recommendation for, for, the, for the intersection. So um, we talked to CDOT, or there have been discussions with CDOT about closing a portion of McDowell Street and turning that into kind of a public plaza. And then for um, outdoor markets or um, other cultural activities. And then extending the south sidewalk along 47 and moving that bus stop a little bit further down just to allow more space for, for an actual bus stop um, on that corner and um, just extending that sidewalk both along 47 on the west and east side. We found that both those sidewalks were a little bit too narrow. Um, and then really when we were reading through the neighborhood reports and, and some of the other reports that have been done for the community in the, in the past years, uh, one of the needs that was identified was uh, more, a little bit more branding for the community. And so we were thinking about how to incorporate that into, into the streetscapes and public realms. So we thought about uh, painting the, the roads um, and then also just adding more trees um, and really bringing those streets down to the pedestrian scale and slowing down the traffic on those um, large avenues. I think this is really important because this begins to create a language for the community. Um, you know, whether you install this all at once or if it's as developers come to the community uh, or within your community, developers in the community come to, to look at different sites that they can begin to understand that hey, as part of this development, we begin to implement these strategies. And over time, so this may not be something that happens all at once or overnight, but it gives a vision for those developers as they're looking for opportunities uh, within your neighborhood or your, your developers are coming in. So, um, so as you do things, it all becomes a cohesiveness and a, and a neighborhood-centric kind of flavor to the, to the corner that, that identifies back in the yards and where it is. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah Jacobson with uh, Lamar Johnson Collaborative as well. And um, thank you, Kale and Aneshka, for starting to go through a site overview, um, or just kind of the site analysis. And now we're going to dive into the three specific sites that we're looking at right now, um, which is the 47th and Justine, the Rainbow, and the Bishop Plaza. And just while we're looking at those three, three specific sites, just noting that they're a lot, they represent a lot of conditions that you might see elsewhere in the corridor. And so it's, uh, well, we might be looking at those specifically, any of the ideas that we're looking at, just kind of keep an open mind that what we're showing could apply elsewhere to, we're just starting, we're starting with these sites. Again, the Invest Southwest initiative is just the starting point. Um, and we're hoping that this development will spur kind of a ripple action that is spreading beyond just those three sites. So you gotta start somewhere and that's what we're starting with. Um, and just a reminder on the format piece of these, we'll get into the three sites, kind of talk through them. We'll talk through a couple options, what we're showing in those options. Um, they're, they're not designs by any means. So this is our, um, it's a first pass, but and it's informed by the past plans and some initial engagement we've had with some community members, but we need to, this needs to reflect what the community's priorities and the community's needs are. So. We really need your input on if you think we're, we're reflecting the right priorities from what we've heard, if you think that there are some things we've missed, um, and just your thoughts about what's there. So um, you won't hurt our feelings with criticism. That The goal of this is just to have something to talk about. So feel free to really speak your mind about what you'd like to see in your community. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn that over to, to Carmen and Kakeli to get through sort of site by site. And we will take a pause after each site um, to allow for comments and questions and have some discussion in this format. Um, so we'll, we'll quickly, we'll try to quickly go through what we're showing and then open it up to hear as much as we can from, from the community. Great. And I'll just, before I, before I advance the slide, I'll just reiterate again, like as, as you're looking at these as Carmen and Kakeli are talking through some of the options, um, and ideas. If, if, if you have a comment, a question, a thought, raise your hand. Um, we'll pause when we pause at the end. We'll, we'll go through kind of in order as people have raised their hands and we'll unmute you and you can, um, you can sort of say your piece. So um, I'll advance it and turn it over to Carmen. 
Great. Uh, thanks, Alan. Uh, so the first site that we'll be talking about is on 47th and Justine. Uh, this site is over 15,000 square feet. It is vacant and it is city owned. Um, so ideally, this is something that um, could move a little, little faster since the city owns it. Um, so this was a, a site that was along 47th Street, was on the main corridor. A key location on the corridor and it's also adjacent to the corner uh, condition of Ashland and Ashland Avenue and 47th Street. Um, it is adjacent to an NOF recipient, which is the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, uh, which is a great opportunity to be able to work uh, with that business. And it is a relatively small site, uh, so we will have to look at parking as well, or maybe try to look at relationships that could be developed. Uh, it is in the 20th Ward, and it is zoned um, a business. So we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, and the white outline does show that existing uh, vacant land. To the left is, to the left, uh, green area if you're able to see that, and the building adjacent is that NOF recipient um, that I mentioned earlier. Next. Okay. These are just some existing photos of what it currently looks like. Um, vacant lot used by um, our local residents or local businesses. Um, there is not really much much to it as far as streetscape or or lighting. Um, so definitely some improvement uh, could help this corridor is trying to bring over the business aspect from Ashland and maybe could bring it over to this frontage. Next slide. Again, another another view of the existing conditions where you can see um, this you're looking toward 47th Street from the back to that corner. Next, uh, now I'll pass it over to LJC so we can go through some of the uh, proposed programming. And thank you, Carmen. Sure. Um, and thanks everyone. I'm Kelly Dawes with the LJC. And um, we're starting with 47th and Justine because this is a, it's a good place to start because we can start suggesting or envisioning ways we can actually take, like, uh, take back 47 and start bringing business back to 47, bringing density back to 47. So we're suggesting here an option where we bring not only amenities, dining, like retail and offices, but residential as well. Um, so in this scenario, we have residential um, that would have a few affordable housing units for starting families or people looking for entry level places to live. But then we also would provide the kind of amenities that they would need and also amenities that draw people down 47th as well. Um, and then also residents, we get access to a courtyard in the center. Now this configuration isn't also set in stone. This is just suggesting the, 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 the capacity that a site like this along 47 would have. And you can click next. Um, and this is another scenario that provides a more even mix of amenities, but also provides a different experience for uh, anyone trying to enter the site. Um, all of the dining and retail is on the first floor and we can provide almost something like a food hall if we're focusing on providing different options for food. Um, but we can also provide varying options for retail, either one large name recognized um, anchoring retailer or several local small businesses to have another brick and mortar. Um, and that would also feature another courtyard on the back of the site to so provide an outdoor and indoor experience for people using the retail. Um, again, we would apply and have some residential above. We would also have almost a secondary or tertiary program of office and civic resources, offices for nonprofits, offices um, for people starting business, business incubators, but placing all of these programs close to each other provides a lot of opportunity for collaboration, connection, um, and making people know that a lot of these resources are available in their neighborhood. And you can click next. Um, and then this scenario, we're just focusing on retail, just trying to imagine if we were making that emphasis on providing many different uh, dining and retailing options for back of the yards, what would it look like on 47th? Um, and that, that's what we're suggesting here. Again, it can be a name recognized anchor retailer, but again, we want to know your ideas about what is needed, what you would like to see on 47th. And in this option, we would provide parking at the top floor. It wouldn't really be visible from the street, but if you're going to use these amenities, you'll have parking nearby, so that wouldn't be a concern to use street parking. You can click the next slide. And here are some examples that we were thinking about. Um, these art residencies, it's a, there's a, a growing trend of 
linking um, housing for artists, lofts, uh, more affordable housing with community amenities. In these two cases, these focus on arts and culture. So a re artist resident can live on the top floor and then provide lessons on the bottom floor. Um, there would be performance space. But this also applies to the examples we showed. Retail can easily work as a conjoining um, complementary program to residencies just because of the, the, the increased traffic, increased proximity, increased visibility. It has a higher chance of it being a, a more lasting, well-used site. You can click next again. Um, and then also about those community amenities, um, Back of the Arts has a very, very, has a large range of rich community organizations that would definitely benefit from having a very good home. Um, so anywhere you see blue in the presentation, we could be suggesting an opportunity for um, many of these spaces that are also seen throughout Chicago. U headquarters in Evanston focuses on youth activities after school. We have the YMCA, we all know what they do. Um, and by the Hand Club, this is a very large facility that provides the maker spaces and creative spaces for kids to use um, and learn skills and training. Um, that's a precedent we'll probably be referencing later on the presentation. You can click next. And also to add to traditional office too. I mean, we we're showing just kinds of different ways to think about that, responding to some things we've heard, but you know, traditional office space, um, especially in the, the post COVID time, um, there's moves to look for more office space outside of uh, city center core, so. Yeah. And then public space. There are many different ways of doing really engaging, exciting urban public spaces that isn't just a, a, a turfed park. Um, and these are examples in Paris, Copenhagen, Belgium, but they're also all over the States too. Um, it's a way of actually placing a good amount of care and attention to paved over spaces that can, you know, be a space that, you know, residents recognize and, and, and love and have special to their own area. And I'll reference these precedents later in these in the presentation as well. You can click next. Um, so this is just again for comparison, a kind of like a maximum option if we really want to see what the, the, the maximum scenario of providing the amenities on a typical site on 47th, what that would look like. Um, and then an option where we would talk about a good mix that would provide an interesting experience for for tenants and also residents, and then an option that really focuses on retail, really providing that wide range of options that many of the neighborhood have asked for in a lot of our um, walkthroughs and, and engagement meetings. Click through. Um, so so we, we would like to ask, in your minds, what is your top development priority you would like to see for this site? And if you have a preferred use for design, that we may have suggested or that we definitely haven't suggested. And what are those priorities that we may have missed that you may not see us suggesting currently? And you can raise your hand and text in the chat as well. We do have a couple of hands up. So we'll start with Angie Kolosinski. I'm unmuting you now, Angie. Angie, are you there? Angie? Should we go ahead to the next one and hopefully Angie can? Yeah, let's try again, okay. Um, next we have up Maureen Keller. Hi, this is Maureen. Um, most folks know me. I've been living in the neighborhood for 15 years. Um, I've been active with Soup Casa, which provides shelter for families in the area. Um, I recently joined the board officially. Um, I don't know if this is the ideal location for it, but it's hard to get more affordable real estate than a city-owned lot. So I'm wondering if there's any thought about affordable rental for women and children, um, which is a super big need across the region and definitely in our neighborhood. Like when we think about what kind of residential housing, some of the things that you all showed us are artist oriented, which is great, but I think there's a big need, a big unaddressed need here for family housing. I know that there's lots of challenges with that, but I wanna put it on the agenda, put it on the radar. Uh, 
Thank you. It's definitely noted as um, we'll get that as a top development priority to, to hear that from the community to have that. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. And next we have up um, Jesse Iniguez. Jesse, I've unmuted you. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, um, a couple of things. I, I agree with Maureen in that um, there is a preferred uh, need for family type housing, but um, but I also know, don't know, I don't think that um, the corner of 47th and Ashland or in the vicinity of 47th and Justine uh, is the best place for that because it will increase density there, especially if it's artist type residency. Um, I, um, couple of things that I, I think would like to see, um, whether it's at this side or any other the other sites, um, you know, if there's going to be businesses to keep it um, or provide the opportunity for local businesses um, or local residents to open up businesses there, um, you know, the 47th Street in particular in Ashton, there, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of small businesses who have been there, been here for generations. Um, I have a business on on 47th and and Hoyne, um, and and uh, and if something that involves a uh, job training, perhaps um, a library um, would be great. Uh, that's something that we've been um, needing uh, for for a long time. We do have the the library that's shared with with the high school, but it's not ideal. Um, and I know that that. Um, you know, the uh, representative Theresa Ma had, has uh, it been able to get some state uh, dollars to be applied to that. Um, if possible, a site like that um, would be great uh, for a library. Um, but again, if it's going to be a business, um, something I, I think that, that is needed more than anything is, is uh, um, businesses with, with job training. A lot of uh, uh, the folks in the community that, that we work, we hire a lot of uh, young people with without any work experience uh, or work training. Um, so being able to help uh, not only with the job training, but access to, to jobs, I think is something that would be, be great. And that's something that we'd be happy to help with as well. Uh, but more than anything, uh, I'm concerned uh, with, with the, you know, the, like, like, also like Sister Angie, um, you know, typed is, is the density of, of, of the space um, with more housing in that particular spot. Um, we do have, uh, you know, and, and some of the previous slides, there's a lot of uh, vacancies. Um, I think if we're going to do housing, um, that would be more suitable for, for, for that. Great. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I'm going to read, there's a couple comments that came through the chat. I'm going to go ahead and read them kind of into the record. Um, Eric Olson mentions a youth center or maker space on the ground floor are both great ideas. There are 1500 elementary age students who attend Hamline and Chavez schools nearby, both within close walking distance. Um, and then Angie is having some technical difficulties, um, but she did mention in the chat um, she's concerned about the density with these plans. Um, I think it'd be good to understand whether it's that they're too dense or not dense enough. Um, she also mentioned the youth in the neighborhood um, and some thoughts that she received when they were visioning for Tom's place that she can share. Um, and also that young people need open space, gardens, and even animals. They're very interested in ecology and mental wellness and see those points as being a priority as well. Um, and uh, Azucena Martinez mentioned that we need a public library in our community first. Um, so those are some comments that came through the chat. Um, Angie says it's too dense, um, so I'll throw that in there as well. Um, yeah, I don't know, it looks like there are no more hands. So unless anyone else has any comments or questions, raise your hands now or for forever hold your peace, we'll move on to um, the Bruce next. just raised his hand. What's that? Bruce Wellums, raised hand. Oh, Bruce, okay. Hi, Bruce. Hi, thank you very much. I, I can't stay long because we're doing a housing meeting in the neighborhood, our uh, weekly coffee clatch. But 
Um, I would I would agree with uh, what's been said overall about the need for open space, the gardens, the uh, the youth space, the library. Um, what I hear many residents uh, in this area talk about is really a place uh, uh, for the kind of programming that will address uh, after school needs, uh, family needs, um, all of those things mentioned in, in light of that uh, seem to help fit that. And it, it revolves around mental health and the ability, we've noticed uh, even in this time of COVID when there is no programming available, that there's a whole lot of uh, uh, suffering in that, that uh, detachment of relationships and that affects how uh, uh, the unrest in the community. So I'll put it at that. Uh, so just wanted to get that in there. And I really appreciate your, your, uh, your, your thinking through this and what you've presented so far. Thank you, Bruce. It looks like we might have two more hands raised. Emilio. Can you hear me? Sure can. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Emilio. Uh, a lot of people in the community know me. I've been involved in that community for about 15 years, and I've seen this lot on 47th and Justine taken for all that time, who knows how long prior to it. So I'm really happy to see this. I'm really happy to see that some type of investment is coming into the community that will benefit the community. One thing that hasn't been mentioned, though, is that that, that, that uh, community has a lot of families, a lot of children, what is needed in that community is a youth center. Something that hasn't been done in so many years. We keep talking about it. We've been to a lot of community meetings. The community plan has always been talked about, but nothing has been solidified. I would love to see some type of resource, especially in that quarter of GP, which we're showing there, which is just east of Ashland, south of 47, that whole corridor there. There's nothing there for you. Nothing. There are no churches. There's a uh, camera school is there. But there's no youth center. Emilio? Hello? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Emilio. Yes. Do you, you could get a little closer to your mic for us? Just a little bit closer. Please. Does that sound better? A little bit. Uh, a little better? <laughs> okay. How's that? It's a little better. <laughs> okay. So I was saying that, you know, that's something that I would love to see you guys consider. If you can uh, think about maybe a youth center for the community, that would be great. I'm, was that youth center? I think that's what I caught from you, Amelia. It was, it was you were a little quiet. Yes, youth center. Okay, great. Thanks, Amelia. And we have, let's see, any other hands? I don't see any others at the moment. Should and we? Will, yeah, so let's, we'll go ahead and move forward. I know we're, we're kind of running a little short on time here. It's now six o'clock. I will just mention that, you know, this is, this is not the end of the conversation. So, you know, if, if you didn't get a comment or a thought conveyed tonight on this, you know, any of these opportunity sites, there will be another opportunity for you to kind of provide some feedback. So um, I will move on to the next one. Carmen, you want to jump in here or you want me to? This is just the intro for the... Oh, edition. I'm sorry. I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time. Okay. So um, next we'll be talking about Bishop Plaza. That is a 55,000 square foot vacant retail space. It sits on 178,000 square feet of privately owned land. It does sit within the 47th and Ashland TIF. Uh, it is business zoned. Um, we have had uh, communications with the uh, with the owner, and uh, the site has been vacant for some for some time. But it does sit along um, this key corridor, so um, it it's a good anchor for for this corridor as well as the investment within the neighborhood. Next, okay, this is just uh, an overview of of the parcel. In the in the back, you can see the former Walmart and Marshall Building um, with the parking lot in the front. Um, it does it does kind of begin at that far eastern part of part of the anchored core that we want to focus on, um, and is a really large site. So, um, this we're hoping to have some some good discussion tonight. 
pass it over uh, onto LJC. Oh, I'm sorry. And there are some images uh, looking at the vacant marshals. Next, uh, the rest of the plaza, which is a fairly large site. Okay, okay Sarah, so do you want to jump into? Um... Thank you, Carmen. Oh. Um, so yes, for this option, we also considered housing again, but I think especially for this side, we really wanted to envision what it would be like to, 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 to hold that corner of Bishop Street and 47th Street with retail amenities that the community would recognize and definitely need as well. Um, but what is really exciting about this site is the opportunity to renovate that big box store, the former Walmart, the former Marshalls, um, with some office civic and education amenities. We were thinking about the opportunity to do some student focused either training facilities like a carpenter school focused on a particular trade. You can also, um, like one of our previous examples that we mentioned, um, programs that are targeted to students after school. Um, we can also think about older than students continuing education activities. These are all programs that we can fit into the really flexible opportunities that that big box does offer. Um, and we would also add some more specific uh, public facing amenities on the north side of what we're suggesting on the corner of Bishop and 47th. I'll click next. And then this scenario imagines that massive big box as a destination, a food destination um, for food halls and retail, but we're imagining a very exciting space with a lot of daylighting cut into that big box store. And then this really generous promenade of green space that stretches from 47th to that big box store that would become the food hall. And we're envisioning in this promenade space um, spaces for vendors to kind of find an opportunity to step towards getting a big box store or so starting businesses, starting restaurateurs can get a container or a small facility space, a working space where they actually can um, have either a seasonal or more permanent space um, to uh, sell their wares. And I can also see that being a great space for farmers markets, Saturday activities, all outdoors. Um, and then we would anchor that corner with explicit community institutional spaces. I know library has mentioned many times and I think it would, you think it would really work there as well. But also, you know, that retail food hall is so large, we can also incorporate program that uh, involves restaurant tour training, culinary training um, that would directly um, benefit um, those who'd be seeking out container space, vendor space in that market plaza. You can click next. Well, and one, can we go back one second of just really reiterating the comments about the that this corner community institutional space could be some of the, the youth focused things, but also, you know, something like a library could fit really nicely here to anchor this corner um, and really activate a, a plaza and outdoor open space as well. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's click quickly through the presence just because we're getting tight on time and I want to make sure mm -hmm. we have more time to hear comments and I'm sure we can share these but if someone has a question then we can stop. So much detail about food halls there, there are many around Chicago and around the country um, and it'd be a food hall that it'd be specific to the neighborhood you can click next um, and this is just envisioning of how to, to activate a space using the containers you can click next again you can click next again Oh, sorry. Well, we, that was an example of housing above library. So that 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 precedent does exist, um, and it's a precedent we're actually interested in exploring as well. Um, so this has housing above a library, so very public base, but then great housing opportunities above. Um, so yeah, we can we you can click the the next slide again. Um, so yeah, again, we want to field questions. So for this site, what are you envisioning? How do you feel about what we've presented? Is it on base? Is it, is it off base? Um, do you have a preferred use or design? And then what priorities do you think we missed in the conversation about this site? And it looks like Terry Cox has her hand up. Terry? Hi, Terry. So I've been marketing the former Walmart and Marshall space at 47th and Bishop for 
a little over two years since Walmart closed. I probably have approached 200 grocers between Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin. One of the main things that I get is that no grocer wants to open a store in the city of Chicago right now. So I don't know that we can actually get a grocery store to go to that location, especially now since Tony's is actually going to take over the food for less at 47th and Damon, because the main grocers that I think might take that location on a local level would be a Hispanic grocer. So if Tony's is uh, the bookend of the market, I don't think we're going to get a Hispanic grocer that will go to 47th and Bishop. We actually had Didi's that was willing to take the former Marshall space, providing that we got a grocer for the Walmart space. Walmart was actually doing $24 million a year out of that store and closed because of theft. Um, that was $645 per square foot. A grocer needs to be at $300 per square foot to break even on a grocery store. So any ideas, I'm certainly open to. Uh, we'd like to figure out how to redevelop that center. Uh, sitting there vacant is not helping any of us out, so I'm open to all ideas. Thank you, Terry. Are there other hands? Does anyone else have a question or comment on this um, site? Marcella Cadena. Hi, Marcella. Hi, everyone. Hi, I, one of my, I really like the, the right design in the sense that there's some greenery and there's like a chance to even just have, um, people can enjoy the space as opposed to on the left, it's just very targeted as to what it's used for, while the one on the right gives a little bit more leniency as to how the community could use it. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, um, that I, I like that part of it. Um, of having that like corridor, that path or whatever, um, is, I thought it was, it's nice, it's appealing. Um, as far as priorities, I don't think you missed anything. I think that I, I jumped in a little late, so I apologize for that. So obviously a lot of talk of the, about the library and things like that. I mean, I saw where you had like the library on the bottom with the housing, like that could be a possibility. I think that was kind of cool as well, but that's all I want to say. Thank you, Marcella. I'll just, I'll quickly jump in here. There's a few comments in the chat. Um, you know, one person asked is, you know, is Boxville sort of a, um, a president? Yes, I think that's one that, one of that we're looking at. Um, Jesse Iniguez mentioned again that, you know, improvement of the current housing stock is important. Um, I think it sounds like he's concerned about doing additional housing along 47th Street. Um, Asusena Martinez, again, um, mentioned the library. There's a few comments about a library um, being a great idea here. Um, Angie um, said priority should be small local business opportunities, youth jobs and skills development, maybe a library. Um, Eric Olson also reiterates the importance of um, considering youth and families in the neighborhood, a youth center, maker space, library, and, grace, and green space are all great ideas. Um, Narcissa, I can't read her last name in the chat, mentions the liking the container market plaza idea. I'm not as interested in a food hall that incorporates fast food chains or expensive eateries. Um, the area lacks a lot of green open space and artful design. Um, the neighborhood lacks educational opportunities like a library or recreational center. Um, David Marroquin mentions prioritizing youth and job training. Um, and then Angie also mentions a concern that, you know, what would development here do to the restaurants that already exist um, west of Ashland? Um, and so I think that's an important consideration too, is balancing, you know, the needs of existing businesses with um, new development. So um, those are some of the comments. Uh, Maureen Kelleher is not interested in a food hall. Um, so those are some of the comments that came through in the chat. Um, I don't see any more hands raised, so maybe we will uh, kind of take all of this and move on to the next one, the last one. The okay. Yep. 
Carmen there. Sorry, I missed your face disappeared. So. <laughs> I'm here. I'm back. So our third location is at 1555 West 47th Street. This is uh, known as the Rainbow Building. Four-story mixed use. Um, on a sing it is a single tenant um, with, with rainbow on the ground floor. Uh, the upper floors are vacant. It does sit within the 47th and Ashland TIF. So it is zoned uh, business and it is the prime location at this uh, key intersection, which is um, one of the, one of the, because the great opportunities of this site is that it is a great anchor to that corner that, that was addressed earlier during the corridor study. Next. Here's an aerial overview of where um, the Rainbow Building sits. Next. Um, existing conditions of the building, um, first floor, and Ashland is really the only active space uh, while the other areas are boarded up and closed down. Next. Existing front conditions. And this is an image of uh, what the building looked like. Um, I believe this image was from 19, was it 1918 or 19? I don't exactly recall the age of this, but as you can see this uh, image used to be Gold Flats Furniture Annex. A beautiful building, a lot of detail. Um, it's when you get up close to it, it really has a lot of architectural character. Um, it would be wonderful to be able to restore it back to its you know, glory days. Next. Okay, I'll pass it back on to um, LJC. Thank you, Carmen. So for this site, um, Initially, the first thought is to give Rainbow a good facelift and then add another retailer to join on 47th. Um, but above that, we also have the opportunity to do some great renovations of an existing theater that's actually in-house. Um, and that can serve community and in institutional, into institutional and cultural um, services as well. Um, so it's a very unique space, a very particular space as well. Um, that can also be converted on the upper floors into offices um, and other civic facing um, amenities. Um, but this is, this is like, it, it would, in addition to doing the much needed uh, site improvements on 47th, this would be a great opportunity to, to, to showcase, um, not only, to showcase the cultural um, capacity of back of the yards and show <laughs> that it's such, it's such a visible um, corner that whatever um, whatever impact that we have, whatever renovations we do here, we we'll just have a very high visual impact alone. Um, so we really want to know your ideas about what you think could possibly be here. It's kind of difficult to see based on the state it's in, but it's still a very, very good opportunity that we're actually excited about. And just to um, echo some of the Kelly's note, the program that we've shown here, just a couple possibilities, we know it's an existing building, so it, there's challenges to try and vertically go up because of the foundations. Um, and you can see sort of in the bottom photo, because of some of that auditorium space that's in there, there's a solid masonry wall that doesn't have any openings um, that makes it hard for some uses to go in there because it wouldn't have natural light along that side. And it's, um, that's probably a load bearing wall to be able to add a bunch of windows cost effectively. So, I think there's still, they could be some really great, beautiful spaces. I saw one of the comments in the chat about a, an artist loft and uh, we could probably click quickly through uh, a couple of the precedent slides, just some, some yeah. cool things that could go into that sort of a space, um, but really open to lots of suggestions of what the community thinks would be a good thing to anchor that corner um, yeah. for the corridor. And we like the Pilsen Arts Community House, which is just like such a great landmark that showcases the artwork on the very face of the building. Um, I don't think we need to do a massive mural on <laughs> Rainbow, but it can be known as a, a good hub for that. And then also CAC New Orleans is a, it's actually a workspace that's attached to an art museum. So you have creatives and then tech innovators working in the same space, um, which is a very, very engaging um, like work share environment. But that's just one of the many different programmatic options that we can have here. Um, you can click the next slide. Um, and then we have shared workspaces that already exist in Chicago. Um, again, there's so many, and that means there's a lot of flexibility for, for what amenities and how it looks and how it feels and how large it is. Um, so it really does depend a lot on what, you know, you're looking for specifically 
and how and how we can better facilitate that. So again, we have the same questions. Um, what are your visions for the site? Um, the priorities that we mentioned, do we hit on them? Do we miss any? Um, and then what are your preferred use for, preferred uses for this site? And it looks like Alderman Lopez has his hand up. Alderman Lopez. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I've seen three of these now this evening and forgive me for arriving late. I had to pick up my children. Um, but I have a question. Three of these program, three of these proposals call a proposed retail space. Who's going to be pursuing attracting the retail tenant? Because I think that is very crucial to the, the notion that if we're going to create a retail space, then someone has to be going out there to fill it. And as Terry mentioned with uh, Bishop Plaza, you know, there are a lot of pr different price points and uh, for different types of retail. Um, this isn't like, you know, field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. You have to actively <laughs> recruit. So who, are, who is going to be in charge of actively recruiting to fill the retail space in any or all of these three or any other proposal yeah. for that matter? So Alderman, I think that's I think that's a good question. I think I think there's a couple answers to that. I think one, you know, um, as part of Invest Southwest, um, we have um, you know secured a, what we're calling a corridor project manager, um, which is a, a local organization that that is um, kind of tasked with helping us to market the corridor, to identify um, interested businesses, developers, um, things like that. I know you know they already have conversations with local businesses that are looking to find new space, looking to expand. And so I think that's one way um, that we're looking to identify potential tenants for these spaces. Um, I also think through the RFP process, the proposals that are submitted um, for the RFP, I think we would be looking for um, those proposals to include, you know, if they have identified potential tenants, if they have, you know, letters of commitment, um, or what their strategy is for um, you know, identifying or engaging tenants for these spaces. Well, I, my concern is still that, you know, we're building spaces and we don't really have um, a plan to fill them. And I understand the role of the, the corridor manager, um, but that is going, that, that is crucial to the success of this, of these endeavors. And even as I'm looking at uh, what Angie has said about no national chains, Unfortunately, we have to look not only for small business, but large business that can afford the rent that, that will have to subsidize any kind of bend towards affordable housing. Um, but also I think that um, it would be good as well for a DP to consult with possibly the realtors or one of them to see where our dollars are being spent and where our dollars are leaving the community because that is a huge driver for what will be successful in the neighborhoods. And by way of example, I want to point out that when we worked with uh, Rahm Emanuel to bring the NOF to back of the yards, one of the best pro uh, projects we helped fund was a dog grooming because we saw so much money was leaving back of the yards to other neighborhoods uh, for dog grooming. And now that business has branched out to a second business because it was so successful, because we were strategic in the retail that we were going for. So I would just suggest that we keep all of that in mind uh, when we move in that direction. The other thing too that I wanna just throw out is that they all, many of these, I think all had shared workspace. And I think we're not being sensitive to the fact that most of our working demographic in back of the yards have jobs that do not revolve or would be able to utilize shared workspace. So I want just to throw that out there as well for everyone to be mindful of the fact that if we're trying to do something that's beneficial to the community, it must meet the community's needs where they are. Otherwise, you know, that issue with uh, Pilsen murals and things of that nature, you will be hastening, you will be fastening, speeding up the gentrification of, that, of this community. And I don't think that's anything that any of us really want to see back of the yards be the next Pilsen. Thank you. 
Thank you. I think those are all great points. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you, Alderman. We do have another hand up. Um, Jesse Negas. Jesse. Uh, thanks, Sonia. Um, so yeah, one of the things that, that I, I would love to see at that site specifically is the restoration of that theater, uh, particularly as um, as uh, Narcisse uh, mentioned in the chat, uh, you know, we need uh, some more cultural arts um, training uh, spaces where young people can can uh, bend, I guess, towards the, the arts and culture. My only concern there would be uh, parking if, if it becomes an event space. Uh, but but if, if nothing else, you know, for, for training, uh, for the arts, music, um, that is something that is lacking in the neighborhood. And, you know, we have, that used to be a theater, might as well, you know, restore it to, to its old glory um, and make it something useful. Thank you, Jesse. Nolan, I'm not sure if we have any more new comments or questions. Yeah, I'm kind of looking through it. Some, it looks like a lot of them are, are sort of reactions to what some of the speakers um, have said. Eric Olson, um, again, sort of underscores the importance of youth education and local business incubation space. How can we encourage and build upon the talents and skills of residents living nearby? Um, yes to arts, yes to education. Um, there, the importance of um, local interests being clear, we're not seeing enough of that in these plans. So I think we need to, you know, I think tonight is, is just a really good, has been a good opportunity for us to hear um, from you, from the community, um, what's important. So we're gonna recalibrate um, some of these um, based on the comments that we've heard tonight. Um, yeah. There's a, Comment from Terry Cox. The theater space would be good for uh, to be used for the ballet. Back of the Yards has a huge and successful ballet group. And it looks like we have another hand, okay. Daniel Marquez. Hi, Daniel. Hi, how are you? Doing well, can thank you. you. How are you? Can you hear me? <laughs> sure can. Hear you loud and clear. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You know, um, uh, my name is Dan Marquez. Uh, we're members of the Marquez family, one of the oldest Mexican families that settled back in the 1920s. And um, having uh, lived in the community uh, through our earlier years and seeing the picture of the old Goldblatt's building and knowing that my dad was a pin spotter at a at a store down the street from there back in the late 30s and uh, early 30s actually. But the Marquez family is definitely part of the history of the back of the yards as is the Chico family or probably the two oldest families uh, in the back of the yards going back to the early 20s. But I'm really just excited about uh, the ideas that uh, are being generated about how the neighborhood could be uh, continued to be revitalized on the commercial strip Housing is always one of my concerns as well as we see the aging of the houses that uh, were expressed earlier. But I just um, want to just hope that we don't uh, finish the conversation and look at um, other parts of the community that have been uh, neglected. Uh, McDowell Street has a historical significance in the back of the yards because it was the place where my dad and his siblings and everybody in the back of the yards community came to for all of their um, recreation. And um, it was there for, my God, 40, 50 years. Everything took place at the Mary McDowell Settlement House. Part of it now, I think, is the parking lot that originally was put out there by Cole Taylor back in the day. But there is a nice piece of property there all the way reaching the 46th Street that I hope in the big scheme of things is looked at as possibly a new site for a community center for that neighborhood. Um, with Cole Taylor now being downsized to what Fifth Third is over there on the corner, that's a great piece of property there that I hope is being considered in the future. But to listen to everyone talk about the locations that um, you're considering, 
Um, I was involved back in the 70s to uh, have a farmer's market on the corner on 47th and Justine in the late 90s, early 80s. And as we go through uh, the years and we see how we need to um, reinvent communities, I'm just very um, happy and, and uh, grateful that the people involved in this are considering the community in terms of its longevity and in terms of its future. As it regards to, as it relates to gentrification, I think the inevitability is going to come where you're going to have housing made available. I already see it with relatives that live still in the community who tell me who's walking down um, Ashland Avenue, who's walking down 46th Street, who's bike riding, who's jogging. And there is a um, change happening and it's going to continue to change for any number of reasons. But I think the, the lifeblood of the community will include not only the commercial strip at 47th and Ashland, but also the involvement and inclusion of children and families in a community center that I hope is being considered um, sometime in the future. Great, thank you, Daniel. And, and I, I wanna, I think I wanna kind of respond to one of your comments. You know, we're focusing on these three sites initially right now, um, yes. but that's not, you know, this is not kind of the end of our focus um, on back of the yards. And so I'm glad, it, you know, it's great to hear you talk about McDowell Street, um, to talk about where the settlement house used to be. You know, both of those have been on our radar um, since the beginning, and I think are areas of focus that we want to, um, you know, spend some time, you know, talking about with the community, um, looking at options, um, for how we can improve those going forward. So, um, you know, thank you for, for mentioning that because, you know, our work in Invest Southwest in Back of the Yards, it doesn't stop with just these three sites um, or this workshop that we're doing tonight. So thank you. Thank you. So I think we're getting kind of close to the end of time here. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I'm sure we're all, <laughs> I know for me, I need to go get some dinner. Um, so um, I wanna move on to, um, we're gonna give the commissioner an opportunity to kind of provide some closing remarks, but I do wanna just really quickly go through what the next steps are here. Um, so, you know, we have had ongoing conversations with community stakeholders and property owners in the area. Um, you know, we were out last week um, meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we have this workshop tonight. We've had um, monthly neighborhood roundtables with stakeholders from the community. So those are ongoing. Um, we're turning around very quickly next week, um, a week from today, we're gonna have our October Neighborhood Roundtable. Um, everyone who's on this workshop tonight, you are invited. We will make sure that you get an invitation to that, to that roundtable meeting. Um, and that'll be an opportunity for us to, you know, over the next week, we're gonna take the comments um, that we've received here tonight. We're gonna digest them, consolidate them, make some changes to, um, you know, these, these programs and these, these concepts that we presented to you tonight and we'll, we'll come back next week with, um, you know, with those ideas um, and just make sure that again, we're on the right track. You know, we've incorporated the right things, we've heard you. Um, and then from then through November, we'll work on drafting an RFP um, for, um, for these sites or one of the sites at least. Um, and we'll come to our November roundtable um, with that draft RFP, and that'll be another opportunity for the community to weigh in, to review the RFP, and again, to make sure that, you know, we've dotted all our I's, crossed all our T's, that the RFP reflects um, kind of the needs and the vision of the community. Um, and our target is at the end of November to release that RFP um, and start to receive um, proposals um, back on it. So, um, you know, more information forthcoming. Again, we'll make sure that we get all of you invited to next week's roundtable so you have another opportunity to engage. Um, but I do want to give um, Commissioner Cox an opportunity to sort of um, take us home. Commissioner? Sure. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Nolan, and uh, all of the presenters. Uh, and, and mostly thank, thank the participants. Um, for the rather insightful additions to um, and corrections to uh, some of the early work. Um, I think it's very clear that there's a capacity for cultural anchor uh, to be included in any development. Um, I think the focus on youth was really refreshing to hear that stated again, that comes from the quality of life plans and you've, you've amplified it again uh, and um, the, the, uh, I was happy to hear about the interest in public space, in quality public space, 
uh, that could be threaded through um, a development. Uh, and I think the um, alderman comments about the retail leakage and being really, really specific of what the kinds of uh, cross-section of needs um, that back to the yards um, would support uh, is very, very helpful information. And so um, you are shaping what will go into these RFPs. Uh, and, uh, and this has been um, incredibly insightful. Uh, I think I've enjoyed the, there's a lot of affection for that rainbow building. Uh, they came through uh, some of the comments. Um, so I think we will continue uh, to see if there's a partnership to be forged there, um, as well as the different kinds of opportunities um, that this small and the large site present. Uh, they each have their challenges, um, but I'm pretty confident uh, that we will find the cat catalyst for uh, the further growth uh, inclusively. Uh, of um, of this corridor. Uh, so um, if ever there was evidence that there's wisdom in the years, uh, it was certainly on this workshop. Uh, I really, really appreciate uh, folks um, who have been working and uh, have lived in the community for a very long time, and we hear you. Um, and I think we will um, digest uh, this and try to sharpen the focus and uh, and through uh, through the uh, neighborhood roundtables, be able to come back and see if we gotten closer uh, to what you've said. Um, so um, again, uh, thanks so much for your input. It's very very meaningful for us. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you.